What's up Gunpla Modelers, this is Strider Prime bringing you a new edition of Gundam Customs. Today I am going to build this non-Gundam kit. The 172nd scale Reactive Armored VFOS Valkyrie or Armored Valkyrie from the Macross Zero animated series. Yes, it's not a Gundam, I know, but considering that I did not create a new um, uh, intro for non-Gundam kits, I'll have to work on that later on. But for now, I'll use this at this moment. But, I am going to build this big kit. Or this big box that represents a big kit. This is a uh, kit uh, made by Hasegawa back in 2002. And I got this uh, from my good friends at Gundam Planet. Gundam Planet got their hands on this, and uh, they gave me this as a, a very, very kindly and a kindly gift for all the times I've helped them out and supported their their store, and uh, you know represented them as best as I possibly can because they're the best company, <laughs> the best store here in New Jer in New Jersey. And I'll continue promoting them as long as they if, as long as they want me to. But they sent they gave me this, and I was impressed with it because I really like the full armored version of the Valkyrie. I mean, we all like the Valkyries from from uh, you know Macross slash Robotech here in the states, from all the various um, episode you know um, series you know, Macross Macross Two. Um, do you remember Love? Um, also, Macross 7, um, Macross 0, Macross Plus, Macross Frontier. There's a ton of Macrosses out there. Uh, we won't touch Delta because, you know, that's something that not many people are talking about. But, Zero, on the other hand, was a great uh, OVA series. And I, I did like that episode, uh, those series. Uh, kind of like a what-if scenario type thing. Um, and I liked the mechanics on that as well. That was really nice. Um, I, I vaguely remember the armored version, but I do remember from the anime, and it was, uh, I think, a friend of mine sent me a, a video of the actual armored version, armored, reactive armored, uh, mobile, um, sorry, I was about to say mobile suit, reactive armored Valkyrie from the episode, and I, uh, from one of the episodes, and I'm gonna have to now revisit, um, Macro Zero again. But, I'm going to now work on this kit, and the reasons why I'm working on this kit is because I gotta wait at least another week or two for my photo etch parts to come in from um, various uh, places because the, the ones that I need are very very hard to find, and I want to make sure I have it accurate. So the Penelope is on is paused for now. We'll get back to the minute, but since I have this kit, I was you know I fell in love with it, and I said you know what I'm building this because. If I'm, I'm going to build it and paint it for MosquitoCon for uh, category number, I think 38, because 39 is Gundam, but 38 is the regular robot section. So it will, this will be built for this kit, for this, uh, for my entry. Because I knew I was going to build another kit for the show. I just did not know what. Um, I have other ideas to do, you know, other kits to make, but this should be simple and easy to work with. Um, it is a bit, it, it, there's some, I, I, you know, when you look at the kit itself, especially in, um, on websites and things like that, and if I zoom in on this guy, you can see what I'm talking about, that is badass with all the missiles coming out. Um, this is not considered a heavy arms version, obviously, but damn, those are a lot of missiles there. Great detail, too. Now, I don't know if this is a kit that you have to build and it will have, you know, the ability to, to transform, maybe, you know, turn into a fighter. I don't think so. This could be just a solid kit build. So, at least I don't have to, if it is, then I don't have to worry about the transformation. All I need is that, that look. And I'm definitely painting this guy. I am definitely painting it. So, before I begin, I'll just say this. Thank you, Gundam Planet. I will do the best I can for this, and I'll proudly display it at MosquitoCon coming in on May 4th. So, let's look at this kit and see what we have to work with here. Okay, 
so we have an instruction book here. Oh, look at all that water slide decals. Oh my god, I'm going to have a... This is going to be interesting. I'm going to put this to the side. And then, of course, the decals. Like, I mean, sorry, the, um, the instructions. Here's the parts. Um, I see some parts that are grayed out. I wonder if these are parts that are not going to be used in the build. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Uh, about thirteen or fourteen types of parts. All right. And uh, here's what it looks like fully built. Obviously, it's not in color, but this is what it would look like if you want, you know, where the, the placement of the decals. So that's good to have uh, a, a separate instructions on this. Also, you have, um, oh, it's actually more of a color guide, too. So we have various colors here. We have a light, like a, um, an off-white color, a lighter gray tone, a, a matted blue-ish tone, and a darker charcoal tone. And then clearly the inside of the actual uh, chest area is the, I'm sorry, not the chest area, the, um, the, the doors that opens up to expose the micro-missiles. It's all red. Um, the head has a, a yellow trim there and some red trims in various parts of the kit as well. And then, oh, okay, so I guess if you don't have the armor, you will have it in Valkyrie mode. So, good, so we don't have to worry about transformation. Uh, that's perfect. Let's uh, put that there for now. So we have the gray parts there. Panel doors. Some clear parts there. Some of the micro-missiles, okay. Oh, okay, so... So the micro missiles is not um, a plate of all missiles as, as one mold. You have multiple micro missiles in separate molds, so that's fine. That'll be easy. And I see the doors here, and I think I see poly caps in there. There it is. So that this is a grayish color. Oh, and then of course you have the. Okay, so I guess this represents the Valgri itself. All the white parts. And then the charcoal, because I know that Hasagawa has made um, has made kits, um, Valgri kits, VFO, you know, VFOS, VF, um, you know, the regular VF series, um, as a solid build of the kit where it, you don't, it doesn't have to be transformable. It's just a solid, you know, sorry, built it that way. So we're going to do that. Clearly, build what it looks like on the outside before we work on the armored parts. There's a lot of parts here see certain things that's required. I remember building the original um, Valgri kit, which at the time was from Robotech when it was brought here by Ravel. And I built the VF, um, VF1J, I think it was? VF, the, you know, the Roy Foker version. Um, that was a great kit, of course, when I built it. It, it, it was a parts former. I will always like to, I would like to revisit that kit if I ever find that kit. So here are the armored parts in the um, in this darker blue tone and a dark and a charcoal tone as well. Okay, so that's actually really cool to see this. Um, I'm gonna have to figure out how to separate all this. Let me review this uh, this color guide again. And like I said before, you have the three different colors there. Uh, there's actually a um, turquoise color, but that could be for the sensor eyes. I didn't realize that. Um, marking and painting. It's actually very simple to figure this out. And then, see the manual here. Where to begin? Manuals all over the place. Then step. Okay, so I see where the steps are. Then close to sixty. So it 
that goes to here. That looks like the assembly of a leg. Oh wow! So you can you have to assemble the vents on the actual uh, leg part. Okay, so it's not an armored part that you would put right over the Valgri. It also omits the actual uh, leg, the internal leg. And I think that's why these are grayed out. Okay, makes sense. So that's the leg part. And then that's the upper part of the body, the the section of the uh, cockpit uh, the backpack and then the head and come around here you have the assembly of the hands cool so this hand this has uh, manipulator hands so it's not a solid hand it's manipulator hands and then the arm assembly that's pretty much reminiscent to what I remember from uh, from the series uh, once you build the arm, then you have to build, then you put the, some parts around the leg again. Then the chest armor parts, the thrusters. And the assembly on the missiles. Armored parts going around the arm, armor parts going on the shoulders. And then the final assembly will be this one right here. And then of course here's the color guide based on the numbers. So one, two, one. So you have white, black, silver, copper, steel, flat, black, clear, red, clear, clear, red, clear, yellow, clear, orange, clear, blue, medium, blue, shine, red, and all these other colors that I don't know if I have or not. But you know what? We're going to play this by ear. We're going to play this based on what I have. All right, so let's talk about the paints that I'm going to be using here. And at first, I was going to use the finisher paints that I have last that I used last year on my Talgis, Talgis Three Real Grade. But reviewing that that paint was, of course, that paint is very nice. But I need, and I'm actually going to reserve that for my Penelope because I'm still not 100% okay using that paint. I'm going to use it, of course, but I'm going to use it on the Penelope. Plus, it's also a little too glossy. It has a bit of a shine, and I'm going to use some other paints that I'm more comfortable with on this kit. Um, and then of course I'm going to matte it up and I'm going to give it also a weathered look to it. Because this this kit does have that feel that, you know, it's a, it's, one, it's like a really big tough mobile suit. Oh, Vulgary ship. Uh, armored kit, you could say. I'm going to say mobile. I'm, I'm not going to be able to stop saying mobile suit, but, you know, of course I have it. So all the dark parts, blue, gray, dark gray, and even the parts that make up the um, the panels to hold up that hold the missile micro missiles, I'm going to prime it using Mr. Finishing Surfacer 1500 Black because I'm also going to do the pre shading on this as well. So I'm going to do that first. The white parts that make up the um, Valgri itself inside the actual armor section, I'm going to use um, Mr. Finishing Surfacer 1500 Gray. I don't have white, which would have been okay for that, but I'm just going to keep that for now, using that till. Now, for the white colors, regular white, number one. I could use MS White from the Gundam line. We'll see. I'll, I'll call an audible on that, but we'll see. We'll use that. We'll use this, and we're going to be doing it, of course, on all the inside that makes up the Valkyrie as well as the micro missiles that make up you know that go that's hidden inside and the micro missiles if you look at this is an extra detail here so I may end up painting everything white but the little tips here I'm gonna probably paint in another color most likely the gray I may end up using gray like what's he, what's here as well so that is for that as for the gray the light tone gray I'm going to use number 306 gray. That should be efficient enough. And I'm hoping to get um, the most out of it um, for the detail. 
um, some parts is going to be a bit of a bitch to paint, especially this one here, the shield part. Let me pull that plate again. So this one, um, this plate itself is three color tones. So you have the edges that make up the blue, the inside that makes up the dark charcoal, and then the outside that makes up the light. So this is going to be a pain in the ass to do because if I'm going to paint this whole black, then I gotta paint. I gotta mask off all this to paint the in the, all this blue. I don't think I have to worry about this. But then um, remove it, then mask off everything that shows here, and paint off that charcoal, and then mask everything else again, so I can paint all this gray. So I can try to keep the shading. I don't think I can worry about the shading inside. That it'll be nice and dark and. I don't have to worry about that, but that's going to be a bit of a challenge for this. I, I'm probably going to be seeing some other parts as well that I'm not noticing that's going to give, give me a little bit of an issue, but we'll, we'll take this step by step. But as for the darker charcoal, um, I have a choice between either um, Xeon MS Grey by the Mr. Color Gundam Color line, or I could use 305 gray, which is almost the same. We'll play this by ear, see how it is. For the blue, well, I'm going to pull out this paint here. Titan's Blue 2. It is a darker tone, and with the, bat, with the black base, it'll hopefully be better, you know, it'll, it'll come out nice. Um, I'm hoping to try the ability of, you know, if I paint this black, paint the inside lightly blue inside, and then give it an overall light pass, so that way the edges show the darkness, you know, the, the pre-shade um, from black to blue, if possible. This should work out for me well. So I have that. The inside of the actual um, housing for the micro-missiles, I'm going to use Russet Red. I like this one. It's a lot darker, even though that's a lighter tone. I like this one better. Um, I know that there is detail there. I'm pulling out the same plate where you could see this. So hopefully what I'll probably end up doing is I'll spray paint everything one color. Maybe the, maybe the, the charcoal. And then use masking tape and cover up the inside and then paint the rest red. See if I can try that idea. Now there are small little things here and there, like there's some detail here, black. I could easily use um, black here, or I can use, maybe either spray paint it, or maybe use a brush and paint it on, you know, just brush it in there, because it's very, you know, very little parts that to do. I could do that. The yellow, which is on the head here, we have this yellow part, this yellow paint here. So it's not going to be that much, um, and I'll, you know, a little good on that. The visor, since the parts are all clear, I'm going to use metallic bluish green, and I'm going to paint it on the inside of the of the of the clear part, so that way it'll show from the outside. And I'll be doing that for that. There's that little notch there, but I can't. That could be a decal. And then they have this little part back here in the back. That red part will be the rust that I have here. Or maybe I'll change the red to a different tone. Uh, obviously the red here on the forehead as well. So, that's pretty much it. These are all the paints that I'm going to be using to make my custom paint job of the VFOS reactive armor. Cool, isn't it? It's going to be a cool build. I know it. And I hope you guys enjoy this build. So, let's begin building Reactive Armor VFOS. Okay, so in the first page of this, uh, of, this mega, of the manual for the um, VFOS, um, this is the leg part of the kit, which, um, as I was reviewing it, I was putting it together and saying to myself, okay, this is going to be a bit tough for me to work with if I'm going to paint it. Because I always try to find a better way of painting it without masking a lot of things. For starters, these little vents here, 
can be removed. They're not glued on yet. So I got no problem with that. But when I was putting this together, I was also making sure that I um, panel, uh, panel, um, sorry, but glue in where the seams lies, seam lines are, and began sanding it down so that way no, um, you know, no markings show up. That was good um, seeing that. However, when I was reviewing the manual, you could, and you, reviewing this section, you can barely see anything. I mean, there's a seam line right there, but I think that's actually part of this section here and supposedly there's a seam line there but I got rid of that so I sanded that down so it's just no big deal it's the same thing for the back part which right now there's nothing there so I got rid of that and considering that the armored plating is covering up this I don't have to go crazy over it however I will detail it up because these parts can be removed and painted separately but I do want to paint this uh, separately um, just in case so the even though these are together I can pop one of them pop them both of them out if I do this just shimmy it a bit and there's one because there's a peg right there and then this one is like the same thing gotta be very careful though there take that off as well so these can be removed and I can paint them separately, especially since I want to paint this one the darker color tone. I don't want to mask this whole thing and then paint it like that. So that's okay for this. But for the rest, um, I was building, I was assembling the part of the leg, the leg armor, as you can see, this is it. And I thought, okay, I'm going to have to paint this one as well. And the manual shows a little bit of this area here exposed. And unfortunately, this cannot be removed because I've already glued this whole section here. So this part, I'm waiting it to dry so I could sand down. But there are parts that goes over here and here. This is actually the front part of the leg. And if I do this, that's where this leg goes. That's a big leg, though. This is going to be a big kit. The thing's going to be around, oof, huge, very huge. But I'm 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 already in the process of gluing parts on it, sanding them down, and then trying to plan a plan ahead on how to paint all this. Um, this will be masked off areas, and then I'll paint it separately, of course. Um, but yeah, this, these are things that I have to figure out and work with here. So, let me continue on with the assembly and see what else uh, I discovered during this build. So, I'm about to start working on the head, um, but I just right now finished up the upper part of the body, which is all white, as you can see. Um, in the manual, you have different types of paint schemes, of course. You have the uh, part that goes here, and I believe there's decals for this that goes right over it the decal here for the uh, crossbone whether I'm going to do that on this I ha I don't know Actually, a minute. let me pull out the decal sheet yeah here are the crossbones there right there I would have to paint this and, and do that but then I have to be a waste of time to actually paint the whole thing I mean I'll probably end up painting it yes but it'll be a waste of time me painting it and then putting on the decal and then it's going to be covered up with the armor which is a little redundant and ridiculous. So uh, I'm not going to expose this since I don't have the... Well, actually, I do have the bottom part of the legs. I could, I could pretty much assemble the kit if I want to, as is, you know, without the armor. But the whole purpose of this is doing it with the armor. So that's pretty much what I'm going to do. i get the uh, things here. Um, but yeah, this this is pretty big for a 148 scale, uh, 148, 170 seconds scale. And you know what? The camera's a little too close, so let me just bring it back a bit. Um, it looks really nice, and I know that when, I don't, um, what is it? I've seen the 160 scale kits. They're not models, they're really like toys and things like that, and they're, they're not as big as this one. Actually, no, they're big. Yeah, it was 172nd, then the next one is 160th, so it's huge. 
Uh, and usually those are the standard kits like um, toys, which are ridiculously expensive. And I'm never buying something like that. Um, I kind of finished up up to there, so the, the last part of this will be these two little ball joints. So once we move and kept grab before they fall on the ground. And then this one goes here. This connector here is um, the most flimsiest connector I've ever seen. And oops, I did it wrong. Luckily there's a notch there. Um, I'm afraid of that because if I end up painting it and pulling parts out, pulling the legs out every now and then just to paint and all, paint it and all that stuff, it's gonna piss me off. But let's put the legs anyway to see how it is. And by the way, here is the leg with all the armor parts and the feet. Let me just point out that for this, these are two parts, and when you put them together, even if you scrunch up really good there's no connection uh, to it so right now I don't have to worry about it because I have the armor over it so it doesn't cover it up but I did glue it up so later on I'm going to sand it down on both ends um, this could be a, a issue for anybody who has a kit like this without the armor but let's put this on just a little bit to see how it is Oh my god. You know what? Let me just get the camera in in focus here so you guys can see this. So. Alright, so here we go. Look at that. Not even without the without the arms and then the pack thing and the head. Holy moly, this thing is big. Really big. You know what? Let me pull something off from the uh, shelves here. Put it like a side by side comparison. Um, okay, I'll use this little guy right here. Here is the Stormbringer that I built last year compared to that guy. Holy crap, that's huge. <laughs> wow. Wow, I'm actually... I was actually dreading... I was like looking at this and building it and I said, I hope I do this right. But now, at first hand, when you look at it and, and, and you build the leg and then you build the, the body... Oh, my God. This is crazy. Absolutely crazy. Now, remember that there's notches here that's exposed. So if this was by itself, I would have problems. But because it's armored parts will be covering up this area here, I don't have to worry about it. So you have to really, really figure this out and how to do this right. But this is amazing. And of course, I planned it out how to remove all these parts so I can paint it separately. This can be removed. This little plate can be removed. This can be removed. This whole assembly of the uh, lower part of the uh, reactive armor for the legs can be removed. The legs, of course, can be removed. This upper part area... Um, certain sections can be removed, this whole plate, this too can be removed. Back here, the, thr the um, little backpack, this can be removed. I'm going to pop it out now. And I made, um, I made, there, this is two parts here and then you have this one here, which I'm going to paint separately. But I can remove this entire section here because it's not glued in. What I did was I loosened, I made, I made the holes a little wider in there. So I can pop it out. Ow, that hurt. And then I can pop this out so I can paint it separately. And then, obviously, when it's when it's painted up, it'll be good right there. Get that in there. But right now, it looks awesome. For a 2002 kit, uh, you know, obviously it has its little defects here and there. But with a lot of work and patience, you can get the most out of it. And of course, I'm impressed on its overall height and size. Hope you guys are too. 
Let me continue on so we can see how it looks. So let me continue building the remaining parts of this kit.